Hello everyone and welcome you all in online lectures. We are going to discuss subject CH511 Environmental Chemistry. In this subject, in previous lecture we have already seen chapter number 1 Concept and Scope of Environmental Chemistry. So in that chapter we have discussed different type of terms, segments of environment, different different type of cycles that we have discussed already in the first chapter. So now we are going to start chapter number 2 hydrosphere and water pollution. Okay. So we have seen hydrosphere in chapter number 1 segment of environment. So four segment are there hydrosphere, lithosphere, atmosphere and biosphere. Out of that hydrosphere we are going to start here. Hydrosphere includes all type of water resources on the earth. In the course of evolution primitive life is originated in the hydrosphere okay whatever the first living organism is seen it is in the hydrosphere so water is very essential and major constituent for all living organism human civilization required water for variety of purposes then quality of quantity of water quality and quantity of water available to human have been vital factor in determining their well-being and history of human civilization reveals this okay and now presently we are able to see that problems with quantity and quality of water supply are not solved yet and in some respect are becoming more and more serious by the day by day sometimes this problem include increased water use due to population growth and contamination of drinking water so contamination of drinking water is done by various ways okay various factors are there which are contaminating the drinking water by improperly discarded hazardous waste leading to variety of waterborne diseases from that polluted water or contaminated water different kind of diseases are occurring then secondly we are going to discuss is water resources so we know very well that different type of water resources are there out of that ocean sea river lake streams then reservoirs glacier polar ice caps and groundwater these are resources of condensed water okay then world's water supply is found in various part of hydrological cycle about 97 percent of earth water is found in ocean as salty water okay 97 percent of water is salty water again another fraction is present in water vapor and clouds in atmosphere okay a part of water it is again present in in the form of water vapor and clouds in the atmosphere then some water is contained in solid state as ice and snow in snow packs uh, glaciers polar ice caps so surface water is found in lakes streams and reservoir and ground water is located in aquifers underground so this water that human use is primarily fresh water which is surface water and ground water this type of water human are using next is chemical composition of water bodies chemical composition of water bodies so in chemical composition of water bodies what we are going to discuss that surface water resources which are ponds lakes streams okay rivers are not linked to one another so in chemical composition of water bodies we are going to discuss the surface water resources which are ponds lakes streams rivers are not linked to one another they retain their separate chemical entities through not differently differing vastly the major anionic species of surface water are carbonate sulfate and silicate okay so some anionic and cationic species are present in the water so anionic is carbonate sulfate and silicate okay sea water is having chloride major anionic species uh, cationic species are calcium and uh, sodium is dominating cation in sea water okay. in sea water is 0.5 molar solution of nacl and 0 0.05 molar solution of mgso4 magnesium sulfate and sodium chloride containing traces of all condensable matter in the universe okay why why this is then it is because of seas and oceans are the final sink for the substances including geochemical processes and the waste dumped in 
result of human activities so like this the water resources are there and whatever sea and ocean are there which they are collected and the matter is collected as a sink then next is criteria of water quality so in criteria of water quality what we are going to discuss important criteria are there so two important criteria for water quality first is ph and second one is pe so what is mean by ph ph is the water criteria indicative of equilibria involving h plus ion established in water so ph is defined as ph is equal to minus log of ah plus ions or minus log of concentration of h plus ion so ah plus is the activity of hydrated hydrogen ions in solution activity of hydrated hydrogen ions in solution in this natural water usually having ph range 3 to 10 and in most of the cases ph remain between 6 to 9 so like this wise ph of water is there main contributors to ph of natural waters are hco3 bicarbonate co3 minus that is carbonate and oh minus okay hydroxyl sea water however is found to have remarkably constant ph of 8.1 plus minus 0.2 all over the globe like this wise ph of sea water is there then after we are able to see the three possible explanation are there first one is buffering action of carbonate system buffering action of carbonate system so in this we are able to see when co2 combine with h2o carbon dioxide combines with water molecule they are giving h2 co3 okay h2 co3 when this h2 co3 is there then it gives h plus plus h co3 minus and lastly again that h co3 minus is giving again one h plus ion plus carbonate co3 to minus second action is there explanation is there buffering action of boric acid system buffering action of boric acid system so in this also we are able to see when boh3 is there boh3 is there and water is added then we are able to get boh4 minus plus h plus ion and third explanation is regarding this is ion exchange equilibria of dissolved cation with solid silicate phase in the marine sediment whatever marine sediments are there in that ion exchange equilibria is observed okay the ion exchange mechanism is presumably the major buffering factor in seas and ocean so like this ph is explained next is pe so pe is such water water criteria such water criteria where water quality which indicates capacity for oxidation and reduction okay so whatever the capacity is there regarding oxidation and reduction it is determined under the pe term whatever pe is there it is capacity for oxidation oxidation or reduction so pe is defined as pe is equal to minus log of ae minus so ae is nothing but activity of electron in the solution activity of electron in the solution it is ae minus means activity of elect means activity of electrons log of activity of electrons because ae values in water may be may vary over more than 20 orders of magnitude it is convenient to express ae minus that is activity of electron in terms of pe which is manageable number so in this we have to see the decomposition of organic matter it gives rise to products which are either poisonous means sorry which are either non poisonous and readily assimilated by plant or poisonous and usually unsuitable for plant and animal nutrition so in this the course of decomposition of organic matter depends on whether the condition in water are aerobic or anaerobic and this can be turned to known can be known from the pe value so one chart is given here regarding removal of macronutrient element removing macronutrient element 
from the contaminated water so in this we are able to see two columns are there first is macronutrient element and second is principal decomposition product again in principal decomposition product two conditions are there where condition first is condition of high pe and in this aerobic condition second one is condition of low pe anaerobic okay it depends on pe values so firstly macronutrient is carbon so it is depending on ph maybe in co2 means carbon dioxide or carbonate co3 2 minus when uh, low pe, pe value is there at that time ch4 form is their principal decomposition product is ch4 methane when hydrogen is micronutrient element at that time at principal decomposition product is water okay at high ph third one is nitrogen macronutrient element is nitrogen so when high condition high pe is there at that time decomposition decomposition product is no3 minus at anaerobic condition it is ammonia nh3 or nh4 plus iron depending on the ph regarding sulfur at high pe aerobic condition it is so 42 minus and at low pe anaerobic condition it is h2s or hs minus again it is depending on ph when regarding phosphate it is there phosphorus so high pe aerobic condition it is hpo42 minus and h2po4 minus depending on ph same conditions are there for low pe same product hpo42 minus and h2po4 minus sometimes maybe it is ph3 so this is all regarding removal of macronutrient element from the contaminated water so next point we are going to discuss it is nothing but hydrological cycle so hydrological cycle it is the most important of all the natural cycles in the biosphere it helps in exchange of water between atmosphere land sea plant and animals about one third of about one third part of solar flux absorbed by the earth is used to drive hydrological cycle means solar energy is used to drive the hydrological cycle means sunlight is helping for working of hydrological cycle so our supply and reserves of fresh water comes from massive evaporation and precipitation hydrological cycles may be either long or short cycle and these short cycles are numerous in number so let's see stages of hydrological cycle so first is evaporation condensation and precipitation so the hydrological cycle depends on the hydrological cycle depend on the give and take of evaporation give and take pro process of evaporation and precipitation water on the earth goes into atmosphere in the form of vapor by the process of evaporation and transpiration from the plant okay about 80% of energy from sun is used to evaporate the water 80% of energy from the sun is used by water to evaporate then the water vapor thus form condensed dust particle and other nuclear particles may be spores that is single cell or pollen grains okay so you know very well a po uh, yellow dust found in flower it is pollen grain or fine mineral particles like this wise the evaporation condensation and uh, precipitation is there then second stage is there surface runoff so in surface runoff we are able to see after the good rainfall all the rainwater precipitated on land does not percolate into the soil right we are able to see whenever rain is there uh, in rainy season at that time all of the water which is uh, precipitated on land it is not percolating into the soil okay so where it goes where it goes so some water is flows into the streams rivers lakes and reservoir okay third stage is there ground water movements so in ground water movement what we are able to see water on land surface oozes through the oozes through or trickle into the soil as a ground water and the soil below the natural water table is held by the underlying clay and the rock strata okay means rock layer and the clay layer then ground water doesn't remain stationary it moves up above the water table hence continuous supply of water to the surface layer of soil is possible is possible so one more important factor is hydrological cycle consists of consists of bal balanced continuous process of evaporation transpiration 
precipitation, surface runoff, and groundwater movement. Okay, groundwater movement. So these are the all stages which are present in. These are the all stages which are present in hydrological cycle. Hydrological cycle. So again, some uh, certain minor local modifications are there to the hydrological cycle are. Um, by diverting runoff and storage phases of fresh water for domestic it is 2% industrial is 4% for power generation it goes up to 12% for flood control it is 1% and irrigation 8% and remaining is recreation so in this without hydrological cycle biological cycle could not occur ecosystem could not function and hence life could not be sustained so that much important hydrological cycle is there for the living organism so now next you can see flow chart of hydrological cycle or the figure of hydrological cycle so in this you are able to see from the ocean the water is evaporating sun is given so clouds are forming from clouds clouds are moving with the help of air and as the clouds are moving we are able to see the precipitation process when precipitation process is there means rain is coming on the earth as the rain is coming on the earth it is goes it goes to the lake okay by the runoff it goes to lake again from the lake evaporation takes place okay that groundwater groundwater is there okay same the rainwater is going to groundwater uh, getting deposited as, deposited as groundwater and that groundwater is absorbed by the plant with the help or with the process of transpiration so this is regarding the hydrological cycle in the next lecture we are going to discuss microbially mediated aquatic reactions thank you this is all regarding today's lecture the next terms we are going to discuss in our next lecture thank you